Christ Church have flown by. I've met many great people while I've been here, and I've made a lot of memories as well. If I reminisce to this speech of all the people and the events that I remember in this speech would take a long time. So I only want to talk to you about my greatest year here at CCS, junior year. And yes, this is about Jesus. And no, it won't be as long as my sermon. <laughs> I believe that it was a mix of things. Between meeting kids that didn't share my beliefs, Dr. Cassis' philosophy class I was taking, and having Dr. Carrillo as an advisor, who I would talk with about God almost every day, me trying to prove that God was real, and he trying to just confuse me. <laughs> it was the beginning of this year when it seemed like everyone around me was telling me God isn't real. And this actually got me thinking, what if he isn't? I had never really thought about it before, and I had always just taken God's existence for granted. It was like I always said that God was real, but I didn't really believe it. However, when this belief began to be tested, it made me ask deeper questions. Like, what is the point of life anyway? Why are we here? If there is a God in an awesome place called heaven at the end of this unpredictable life, then why do we even have to go through this life? What's the point of it? What's the purpose? This started me on my quest to find the God that I had thought existed all this time, and who I claimed I followed. Somehow inside of me, I knew that God was real, but I wanted proof for myself. I wasn't really sure. I remembered kids in my church's youth group who really loved God and it seemed real to them. And that's what I wanted, for God to be real to me. So I began to read the Bible because I figured if I was going to find God, I would find him through the Bible. I began to pray more. Every night I would pray and say, God, I know that you're real, but I want to really know that you're there. I also remember the day in November during Thanksgiving break when I deleted every single secular song of my iPod and began to only listen to what I call Jesus music. Now this sounds extreme, I know, but I found that the measure in which you seek God is the measure in which you'll find him. And I was certain. Now back then I didn't know the scripture Jeremiah 29, 13, which says, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. But nonetheless, I was doing exactly what this verse said, seeking with all my heart. And I can distinctly remember the day in January, about 11 at night, when all of a sudden, in my innermost being, it seemed like I suddenly knew and had a confidence that God was real. I thought being angry all the time, being self-conscious, and always having the mindset things will get better later in life was something that was normal. But God showed me another way. Before this moment in my life, I didn't know joy. Before this moment, I didn't know peace. I didn't know purpose. I didn't know confidence. I didn't know love. But when God revealed himself to me and I actually began my relationship with him, everything in my life got better. I now understand the purpose of life, which is the first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. It was as if I was instantly filled up with God and he became the center of everything that I am. It became all that I thought about, all that I lived for. And after I finally received Jesus as my Lord, I stopped living off the faith of my parents, and my pastor, and the people at church, and put my own faith in Christ. He revealed a purpose and joy in my life that nothing could ever replace. I am now not looking for fulfillment in the future. I am living in it right now. And let me tell you that my life was not bad at all before Jesus compared to some people's lives. And that's one reason I want to go into the ministry, to share the love of God to people who need it more than I do. As I began to continuously grow my relationship with God and experience the awesome life of being totally consecrated to Him, I discovered this deep desire to tell people and show people and teach people about this God that I had found. This was the moment that I knew that I needed to go into the ministry, and it was the start of my doing everything I could to tell people about Jesus and share His love with others. This desire drove me to lead Bible study, to lead sermons, to stand up in front of my entire school with some scribbled notes and tell people out of my heart that God loves them and wants to have a relationship with them. I have found that many people just do not care, but there is nothing I can do about that. I have developed the mindset that I am just going to share the love of God with people whether I think they will accept it or not. And if I only get one person who wants to know Jesus, then I'll still be the happiest person in the world, because I know that is one more person who gets to know the unending love of Christ. Next year I am attending Oral Roberts University School of Theology and Missions and intend on going into the ministry after that. I am excited to follow in God's plan for my life and see where he leads me and takes me. However, no matter where I go, I will never forget this school because it's the place where I found my faith in Christ and where my life completely changed. I will never forget the many people here I have met, the many people who I have had the pleasure of talking about Jesus and my faith with, the people who I have watched come to Christ and water and seek God, and sadly those who I have watched accept Christ as their Lord and slowly walk away from Him. There is one thing I have learned here at CCS while being a crazy Jesus kid. 
is to never allow other people to discourage you, define you, or change you. Always be who you are and what God calls you to be. If you're so different from everyone else that you stand alone, then stand alone. Thank you.